So if you don't know what imposter syndrome is, I have some few questions for you. So do you agonize over even the most minor mistakes or flaws in your work? Do you attribute your success to luck or outside factors? Are you very sensitive to even constructive criticism? Do you feel like you will inevitably be found as a phony? Do you downplay your own expertise even in areas where you are genuinely more skilled than others? Well, if your answer to all these questions is a yes, then you probably have something called imposter syndrome. Yes, it's, a pos it's possible to have imposter syndrome without even knowing the word exists. So the questions that I've just asked are siphoned from the works of psychologists Pauline Rose Clance and Susan Emmes that developed the concept. Originally, they called it imposter phenomenon. So in their 1978 founding study, uh, the link to which I will put on the description box, it focuses on high achieving women. So they posited that despite outstanding academic and professional accomplishments, uh, women who experience the imposter phenomenon, or today known as imposter syndrome, they persist in believing that they are really not bright and have fooled everyone or anyone who thinks otherwise. So, what is imposter syndrome in short parlance? Um, it's defined as doubting your abilities and feeling like a fraud. So, it disproportionately affects high achieving people who find it extremely difficult to accept their own accomplishments like I said now if your answer like I said to all these questions was a yes you might have imposter syndrome and the study of these two psychologists like I said it's on the description box So, a good number of medical students, including my very humble self, at some point or at some stage in our medical career, must feel like we don't really belong. By which I mean, we feel as if we are really not good enough and we have only gotten to where we are due to some kind of luck or even deception. We're not often fear enough others will eventually discover this truth. Or it's a lie. Call it a lie because that's exactly what it is. I mean, your brain is never going to tell you that it's a lie. Besides, that's why we call it imposter syndrome. Fear of failure has killed more dreams than failure itself. So, kick your imposter syndrome to the curb. You belong in a space as soon as you enter it. I mean, that's why you are in a medical school. And since you are cruising through medical school, no matter what stage of medical school you are in right now, this is where you belong. You deserve it your brain should not lie to you. You see, Maya Angelou once said, I mean, she's one of my favorites, after writing several successful books, that each time she brought another book into the world, she worried that they are going to find out now I've been running a game on everybody. I mean, this is one of the most brilliant poets out there of the African Renaissance. So imposter syndrome may be driving you crazy. It may be driving you in a chokehold through this period. Through this process, through this journey, it's a Herculean challenge. It's a Herculean journey. That's how I like to call it. It's crazy. You spend so much time dreaming out being at a certain point just to get to say it, that particular point and begin questioning if you are even cut out for it. I hear that too. I mean, it's real struggle. So it's really a terrible, a terrible feeling. Now, how do you fight against it, how to cure yourself if you are suffering from imposter syndrome. Number one, share your feelings. Talk to other people about how you're feeling as, you know, negative feelings magnifies when they are not voiced out. Talk to people. Number two, help others. When you identify people in similar situations and offer to help them deal with theirs, your own problems would eventually disappear. Number three, assess your abilities. You know, write down your accomplishments and whatever you're good at, you know, it helps. It helps you deal with this particular disorder. And it's very, very important to clarify here that this is not a psychiatric disorder. It's not really, really part of the DSM-5, nothing like that. All right. It's not a recognized disorder in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. I repeat that. It's very, very common and it's estimated that 75% of people will experience it in their lives. So it's not, you are not mentally sick. It's a psychological occurrence, not a mass. Number four, 
Stop comparing. So comparison is a thief of joy, as some people put it. Now, whenever you have compared yourself with others and fall short, you'll be unhappy. Stop doing that. You are unique at what you do. Number five, question your thoughts. So questioning whether your thoughts are true given everything you know and it's even accurate that you are a fraud goes a long way to help you. All right? You are into fraud. So just question your thoughts. So there are many other ways too. But I also believe that finding yourself a tribe of people who have your welfare at heart and are willing to let you know the good in you instead of your flaws is just an excellent way of dealing with it. And I think it's one of the best ways to deal with this. Don't sit around people that just be talking negative. Avoid such people. You have peer approval? I have never asked my peers whether they approve. Why not? I don't care. 